What's up, everybody? Welcome to my live stream here. So what I'm going to attempt to do tonight is to install my new Royal Exclusive Red Dragon 100 watt flow pump. And I'm going to go into my sump room right here. This is the big main fish tank room where my display is. So this is a um, remote sump. Got to turn my skimmer pump off. Just hang on here while I get everything straight. Bear with me. Just got to clear that alarm here. Had a little overflow in the skimmer cup. We'll take care of that right now. That's what happens when you don't turn the pump off or the skimmer off before you turn that pump off. Lovely, right? <laughs> All right, I got that taken care of here. Can everybody hear me okay? That'll clear in a second. All right, all right, getting my act together here. So uh, for you guys that are just uh, folks that are just joining, what I'm going to do here tonight is I'm going to replace a Royal Exclusive Red Dragon pump I have. Um, I had two 80 waters. <clears throat> so this is the one 80 water that I still have that's running. What happened to the other 80 water is um, I'm 99% sure that it got zapped because of some surge and I didn't have the pump plugged into a surge protector so now I have what I call um, it's actually called a, a surge suppressor not a surge protector and if you guys saw the video I just put out um, I think it was yesterday explaining the difference between the two basically a surge protector will detect a surge and shut down a pump automatically where a suppressor will kind of even out the um, the electricity and save the you know and, and and save the pump that way so I now have this um, surge suppressor and if you want more information on that surge suppressor that I'm using you can check it out in the video description below there's a link to that surge suppressor anyway so let's do an unboxing of this pump. Get my trusty uh, tool to open up the box here. So this, uh, this arrived today. A little beat up in the corner there, so hopefully that's okay. Let's see what we got. So this is a brand new, just released in the United States, a Royal Exclusive 100 watt flow pump. And if you want more information in terms of the specs on this pump, you can click on the um, upper right hand corner. I got a link in the video. And there's also a video description. Uh, actually, there's a link in the video description below as well to get more information. So, I'll tell you, I hate these little styrofoam peanuts they get all over the place you know but I know they're necessary 
Alright, this is gonna be... This is gonna make a mess. Eh, not too bad. Alright. So let's, uh... Let's tidy up the floor a little bit. Bring this back up on the bench. That's what's inside. So I've read the instructions beforehand, so I kind of know what I'm getting into right here. So th this should be pretty much plug and play. Instructions, we'll hold on to that for later. Got here. There she blows. Looks very, very similar in terms of the form factor to my 80 water, but Royal Exclusive has discontinued the 80 watt pumps. So that's why I now have the uh, 100 watt pump. Controller. That there. I think these might be uh, some extra fittings. I think I got everything out of that box. All right. Let's see what we got here. So what's new with this um, pump and controller is that there now is a quick disconnect in terms of the pump plugging into the uh, controller. So that's not something I had before my 80 watt pumps. I, uh, I originally bought the 80 waters just a little bit oh about three and a half years ago so I need to uh, get something to cut in here the warranty I I believe it's a two-year uh, warranty on these pumps. That's what I believe. What type of sump is that, John? That is a um, that is a Royal Exclusive Dream Box. That is the uh, the BMW of German sumps. <laughs> it's a beauty. I'll do the best I can in terms of answering you guys' questions. I'm going to try to like. Um, work and look at the computer every now and then to uh, stay in tune with what you guys are asking about here. Got that. Cut that off. Yeah, so I... Um, I run my, my aquarium, my, my aquarium is 187 gallons. Total system is about 250 gallons because I also have this uh, frag tank pl uh, plumbed in. So I use, uh, I use two return pumps. I really like using two return pumps because it provides uh, redundancy. So in case one uh, craps out, like, uh, like what happened to me, <laughs> you got a backup. So it's always good to have a backup. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just connect the pump to the controller. Try to line these pins up here. And 
think that's good. So what, what I'm going to do first, before I put this pump into the sump, is I'm going to run it in this five gallon bucket. That's what the manufacturer recommends is just running it just to get the impurities from the, um, you know, the, the manufacturer, um, all the manufacturing and whatnot, just to make sure you get those impurities out of the pump before you put it into the, uh, into aquarium water. So I'm going to use a little vinegar to do that. Add a little hot water. While I'm waiting to fill that up, see if you guys have any more questions. Yeah, three and a half years ago, um, I did um, buy these pumps new. So in terms of the cost of the pump, the new 100 watt pump is about $900. And I cannot recall off the top of my head what the, uh, what the cost for the, uh, for the 80 watt pumps were. Like I said, they've uh, discontinued them, but I'm fairly certain the price was similar to the $900. It's worth the money in my opinion. Yep. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Put a little bit more of this in there. Well, like I said, if you want to um, click on the upper right hand corner, there's a link to my website that gives you all the information on the pump, all the specifications, as well. Uh, there's also a link in the video description below. So once I get this um, bucket filled up, I'm going to run it for about five minutes. Hopefully it doesn't go uh, splashing all over the place. So I'm taking that off because my dream box already has the, um, the bulkhead fitting on there. Oh, it's Scott. Is that you? It's gonna it's gonna spray the water right out of the bucket. Is that what you think? Now, Scott, you're the one that recommended I do that. <laughs> Is this thing gonna get all over the place when I put it in that bucket? I'll do it quick. Oh boy. I think you set me up for something here, Scott. Ugh. Okay. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on its side. So hopefully that's not going to uh, spray the water up. This could be a very uh, <laughs> this could be a very short test. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I did. It's on its side.
Well, here goes nothing. All right. We've got some action here. <laughs> Like I said, we're going to just let that run for about five minutes just to get all those impurities out. doing its thing. I'm going to take these covers off here. What I'm also going to do is put the controller on the sump. I've got some brackets here for that. So that should slide right in there. And I'm going to adjust this later. to adjust that upwards. I'll have to make an adjustment later on that. Yeah, Scott, I think I'm going to have to uh, dry rig something. I think the uh, with the quick disconnect, it's not it's not fitting on that mount, but I could figure something out. Try to figure out a way to raise that up a little bit. If that's my biggest problem, then I, uh, I think I'm home free. All right, we're gonna give this another couple of minutes do its thing there. So on the um, on the way I've got this dream box set up. Got actually um, two places for our media reactors. So I have both the, um, the two liter and the five liter. The two liter I, I have right here. That's the two liter and what I use in here is activated carbon. So I'm gonna put that back online tonight because um, basically the pump that went on me was the um, pump that I had my two media reactors hooked up to, although I'm only using one right now. I used to have GFO for one of my media reactors, but now I'm using the uh, this arid uh, algae reactor. So I'm only using one media reactor, but to do water changes, I um, that's the pump that, that went on me, the pump that I used to do water changes. So this past weekend when I did a water change, I had to shift <clears throat> my media reactor pump, return pump, to the um, pump for, that I use for water changes. So the, these pumps serve dual pur purposes. It returns water to the display tank, this one does, and it also uh, feeds the two media reactors. And this pump returns uh, water to the display tank, 
and I also use it um, for water changes. So I have this ball valve right here, and I could show you the whole system in another video. Actually, I do have a video in terms of how I do water changes. So I just turned a couple of uh, valves, <clears throat> and that will uh, empty water into that slop sink. And then pretty much what I'll do is um, have freshly mixed salt water in this drum. It's a 55-gallon drum. I have RODI water in that 55 gallon drum so when I um, need water in the mixing drum I pump it from that drum to this drum and then when I want to um, put the new salt water into the tank after water change I'll show you I got a couple of valves right here that I turn and that'll send it into the sump so it's always easy, you know, it's always good to have an easy system set up. Uh, okay, thanks, Scott. I'll try that. All right, so let's um, let's turn off the pump here. So I'm going to crank down the um, the wattage here. So that's always a good idea is to turn down the flow rate on a controllable pump. That's another safeguard to um, prevent any electricity spikes. So before you shut them down, it's always good to put it down on the, um, on the lowest setting possible. And that way, even though you have it plugged into a, um, a surge suppressor like I do now, it's, uh, it's a good safety backup. So I'm going to pull the plug now. And now I'm going to put the pump in the sump. So what I'm also going to do is, um, I'll do this right now, I'll just put it in and then I'll get it positioned. So now I just need to, uh, Screw it on the fitting. She is in. Yeah, the uh, the MSRP on that pump is nine hundred bucks. Like I said before, I think it's totally worth it. Anyway, all right. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna just take the. Uh, controller here do a little uh, positioning wiring let's see go over here with it do a little uh, cord management here these back on
get that nice and tucked in there. All right, I'm gonna figure out how to mount that uh, a little bit later. All right, I'll plug it in. There she goes. Let's take a look at the display, see what that's looking like. Success. All right. So what I normally do is I, um, I run these pumps at 60 watts, so I'm going to crank this up to 60. Alright, so all I got to do is really... Um, get that mounted but other than that it was a uh, it was a success I'm very happy now to have two return pumps going on this tank once again so like I said I got to get um, my activated carbon going so I'm gonna um, I'm only gonna use half of what I normally use because I don't wanna I've had um, probably no uh, reactor on there for about over a week so I don't want to like um, shock anything, so I'm going to just kind of go slow on the activated carbon. I think it will be okay. I don't think I'm going to have any problem with that. So let's see, did I miss any questions here? Yeah, David, it is a, um, it's great to have a lot of room. Um, you know, obviously I'm lucky. I just um, plumbed this tank right through the wall. I don't know if you can really see that or not, but it's a... Uh, it's a great setup to have all this kind of room to maneuver with a reef tank. I pretty much don't have any equipment <clears throat> in the actual room where I have my display. I've got the lights. There is nothing underneath that stand. And I've got some um, controllers for my uh, Vortec, uh, Ecotec uh, pumps. And that's about it. So everything I do in terms of maintenance is in this room. And it works out great. So yeah. That, um, that's pretty much it. And definitely check out the video that I put out yesterday on, on surge suppressors and controllable pumps. You know, I learned from Scott that you really need to um, be mindful of that. And that's probably what happened to, um, to my pump is that it, it got um, fried because of a surge. So, you know, I've been keeping reef tanks for over 25 years and and you learn something new every day and I didn't I never uh, realized that you would need a um, protection like that and and keep in mind that a surge protector I think I mentioned this at the beginning will not do the trick a surge protector it will protect the pump but every time there's a surge it's going to shut that pump down and with a uh, reef tank you don't want a pump to shut down on you and not be around to uh, to turn it back on so the surge suppressor will even out that surge and that's why it's really important. You know, these these units are not uh, cheap. I think this one that I uh, I bought, which I have both pumps plugged into the 80 watt and the um, the 100 watt, was around 200 bucks. You know, and again, I got a link in the um, video description for what I bought. So hopefully that was um, something I'll never have to worry about again in terms of replacing a pump due to a uh, due to a surge. How is the, the KH director? I love it. The uh, the KH director has been great. 
it's um, really zero maintenance. I calibrate the pH probe every few weeks. But, um, you know, other than that, it's, it's great to get a daily readout of um, alkalinity. I only do one reading a day. I don't really feel like I need to do more than one reading a day. And um, it's great. I don't have it set up to control the alkalinity. That's something that you can do. You can basically tell the, um, the doser 2.1 to dose more alkalinity if it sees a, uh, you know, let's say a drop or a rise in, in the um, alkalinity. So I, um, I will probably end up doing that. I just, I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Yeah, Scott, that's right. The, um, the third suppressor is also a UPS, so it's, if you get a blackout, it's going to um, give you some power for a few hours, which is a nice thing to have if you don't have a generator. Yep. All right, folks. Well, I think that, uh, that does it for me. Many thanks for, uh, for tuning in. And I'm going to try to like do a lot more of these uh, live streams. I've ba I basically have a GoPro that's hooked up. I've got it hardwired into my computer. So I would really like to do more of these and kind of show uh, you guys what I'm doing in real time in terms of maintenance or just general things with the reef tank. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you liked the video, give it a little thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Adios, everybody.